So now for those of you guys that have 8-bit boards, the flashing process is a little different. So right now I have my printer's control board plugged into my computer. And instead of hitting the little check mark for build, I'm going to actually click upload. Now, before I do that, one thing I want to mention is if you have a computer that has multiple COM ports, you may have to tell it what COM port you have. To determine what that is, you can go ahead and click the little platform IO home button. And then you'll go to devices and it will show you all the COM ports. Now on this computer, I only have one device. Now, if you have multiple devices and you're not sure what port your printer's on, you can go ahead and unplug the USB cable hit refresh and see what disappears. The COM port that disappears is the one your printer's on. So now I plug the printer back into my computer and we can see COM3 has shown up. So in the event that you need to specify the COM port your printer's on, you can go ahead and click the COM port name. You're going to drop down into the INI file and then open the AVR.ini. Now, depending on what type of board you have, you're going to need to make the change in a different section. To figure out what that is, we can go ahead and open the platform io.ini file here on the left. So in the platform io file, it will tell you what environment we're going to need to set the COM port under. In my case, this is the MelZ OptiBoot Optimized. In your case, it might be Mega2560. Those are the two main 8-bit boards we'll be flashing for if you're using our firmware. So now I know I need to make the changes under the MelZ OptiBoot Optimized section. So I'm going to go back to the AVR INI, scroll down until I find it. And you can see it here at the bottom. I'm going to remove the little pound sign in front of upload port. And I'm going to get rid of the COM1. And I'm going to paste in that COM port that I copied from earlier. So now the firmware knows that our printer is on COM3. At this point, I can go ahead and hit the upload button. And now it's going to compile and then upload to the board. Now again, if you only have one COM port listed, you do not need to make this change. I'm only mentioning this because on some of my computers, there's virtual COM ports for different management devices on certain Intel platforms that show up as a COM port. So this will typically prevent the auto detect from working. So that's why we have the option here to specify the COM port to upload to the board. So as you can see here, it went and compiled the firmware and now it's going to be uploading the firmware to the printer's control board. In this time, do not touch anything on the printer. Don't try to use the LCD. And if you'll notice, the LCD actually will not be responding at this time. It's going to write the file over the USB to the printer CPU, and then it'll do a verify. And after it's done with that, we'll see a success box, just like we saw with the 32-bit ones. And at that point, the firmware is done and it's updated on your board. So as you can see here, we have a success at the bottom. If we look at the printer, when you turn it on, you'll see our logo and you'll see the version number of the firmware you just uploaded to it. 